the ECO is uh, a loudspeaker instrument. It's a 20-sided object. On every plane you find a membrane. We use ambisonic beamforming for producing very narrow beams so that we can actually produce very strong phantom sources, so to speak, on surfaces. So it's an, actually it's an instrument for spatial compositions. The first reaction that I get from people a lot, people feel that sound is coming from different directions and it's very, very physical, almost sculptural. You wouldn't take your finger and say, ah, oh, it's coming from here, there. You would actually immediately do something like, it's somewhere and it's like there. You, you start to feel, um, areas, more so um, objects, object-like phenomena. I think when you are a composer and a sound artist, you have an idea what the echo should do. And you say, okay, beam me this sound there. Very simple. Then you have to ask yourself, or maybe the echo is asking, uh, do we really hear it from there? And then you start walking around. This is another paradigm shift. Normally, people would sit in the studio in something they would call a sweet spot. But the echo does not have such a sweet spot. So you have to stand up from time to time because the eco is using the features of the architectural space. So some sounds are much stronger, others are more absorbed. Working with the eco is teaching us to understand sound as space and not sound in space. I remember, it must have been in 2008, I found myself in a pr presentation of the original ECO. And it was a presentation only for engineers. Franz Zotter, who built the grandfather ECO, he produced a very strong beam, third order ambisonics, and he used a, a equatorial rotation. It was then that I realized that I hear a single rotation, but I hear heavy uh, noise from there and lighter filtered noise from there and I hear something from there and it changes while the beam is rotating. And that is a whole world. The experience was strong enough to tell this is pretty close to the utopia of electroacoustic composition at Gavarez in his writings was talking about sounds that are actually like objects, planes of sounds. Yeah. With the echo, even in 2008, everything was there. It was buggy, it was shaky, you, it wouldn't run all the time. But for 30 seconds or one minute or something, you could really experience this is Edgar Barres. That is when he was writing down his utopia of, uh, of future music. One of the very intriguing features from the beginning was mobility. After a while working in the field, you know that every system sounds different. And there it was, the mobile echo. It's like as if I take my piano on the road and put it somewhere else. Custom-made case. This case is actually really shielding the echo from uh, everything that Turing demands. We have uh, this one cable that comes out of the eco and uh, goes to the amplification and about 250 watts uh, per, per channel. So that's insane. Yeah. 
you need two people to put it onto the stand. That's everything and down again. But from there, you can pretty much handle everything on your own. Within the past only five years, we played, I think, 40 concerts in 40 different venues. And that's, that's what I call mobility. So Zagreb was 2015, it was an invitation to the Istlog Festival for Contemporary Sound and that was the first time that we uh, showed pieces that um, I composed only for the eco. We were able to play the same concert in different uh, uh, architectural environments. If you really want to understand the eco, you actually need the possibility to hear the same piece, the same sound sculpture in two different architectures. And that was, that was what we did. First evening was in the French pavilion with a reverberation time of over six seconds. So impossible for normal loudspeaker systems. And the next night we were playing at a gallery space, very different architectural features. And it was actually a very important experience for myself to understand what, what the eco is doing in a large volume and in a smaller volume. Uh, it, was a, it was a sound installation at the Fuhrwerkswage Exhibition Hall in Cologne. The idea was I placed the eco in a very special architecture and install the sonic sculpture and then I step out. So no explanation whatsoever, no graphics, no, let, let people live with it. And I could experience all the features we were talking about coming together in a very refreshing and interesting way. So you see how people react towards the eco. They stand in front of it and then they walk away. And then they stand with a head towards a door or, or to the wall. And then they lay on the floor. They interact not only with the eco, they forget about the eco after a while. They interact with space. Actually, they're producing their own space. And you can't say, anymore they react to, to the loudspeaker. There's more. So ZKM, Center for Arts and Technology in Karlsruhe, Germany, opened a highly interesting um, exhibition in April 2019 called Negative Space um, about sculpture in the 20th and 21st century. And it was the perfect timing to go there and play classical electronic loudspeaker music interpreted with the eco. In one evening, we played piece by Stockhausen, Oliveros, König, Xenakis, and it worked surprisingly well. I was approached by lots of old school uh, electronic musicians, loudspeaker composers. I mean, they were really touched. Sculptures were coming to me, people working not with sound were coming to me and they were saying, okay, I clearly, I clearly experience a sculptural form and not only in space, but as space. So it's the sculptural form is producing the space. I never wanted to convince anyone, but once someone is telling you as a sculpture, this is convincing as a sculpture, that's nice.